it's a very, very steep room I'm going to have to look up to make sure I can see you all. Okay. So at WordFence, we have the motto, think like a hacker. And the idea behind it is that if you can identify the potential vulnerabilities that can be used to compromise your site, then it puts you in a much better position to defend your site from an attack. So my job here today is to teach all of you how to think like a hacker. So we're going to look at a couple of different vulnerabilities, specifically how they work and how you exploit them, and also how you can mitigate and patch against them. And the idea is to teach you what's possible, what attackers are likely to do, what they're looking for, and give you a better understanding of how to think like a hacker so you can protect your sites. So to keep things simple, we're going to use this Chrome browser with the white bar along the top as the site owner. And then when we wear the hacker, we're going to use this one over here. It's got the black bar on top, which is the incognito mode, aka hacker mode. So the first thing we're going to do is the simplest attack is a brute force attack. So what that means is we're going to try and guess the password. And luckily, um, because all we have to do is find a login form, it doesn't matter what the site's running. But we know it's WordPress, so the theme makes it pretty obvious. And even if it wasn't obvious by the theme, we could look at the source code of the page. And there are various different signatures that WordPress will leave lying around for us. So we can assume the login form from that would be hiding in here, nice and simple. Occasionally, it's renamed. It usually doesn't matter, though. And now we need the username. Well, luckily, WordPress is going to help us with that. So check admin. No. See here, it says invalid username. We know it's not admin. The guy that writes this site's name is Steven. So let's check that. It's not that one. OK, what else can we try? Well, if you look up here in the domain, there's a username in here. We've got Valoran, Valoran.dev. So why don't we try Valoran? We'll see if that's the site. Username, random password. The message has changed. See this? So now we know we've got the username for this account. We've got the login form. All we need is the password. And here's where the brute force attack starts. So a simple brute force attack, you just start trying different passwords. That was QWERTY, 2345, password. Hey, none of those are the password. And we can keep trying that for hours and hours. We'd get kind of bored, but we could eventually find the password. There is a much easier way, and we can automate the attack. So there's a tool called WP Scan, which is a WordPress vulnerability scanner and pen testing tool. And it provides a bunch of different features. It'll scan the site to look at different versions, to work out what you're running, find vulnerabilities, and has some tools built in as well, including a brute force password attack mode. So we'll jump on the command line, and we'll use that. So you can run it by WP Scan. URL, tell it the sign address. Yeah, and I won't try and talk while I type, otherwise it's going to end badly. Enumerate. So we're going to tell it we want to enumerate the users to figure out all the users on this site. And we're going to tell it we want to figure out the passwords. Oops. We're going to use the password database. So run through that. So what the password database is using here is RockU, which was a site that was breached about 10 years ago. I think there was, what, 32 million accounts that came from that and they had plain text passwords. And so they extracted 14 million unique passwords from this database. And what that allows, gives us is 14 million passwords that have been known to work, and many of them have been reused many times. And so we can try them as part of an attack to see if anyone is reusing those passwords. And so you can see up here, um, WP Scan identified four users. The first one's actually not a user. It's the display name of the Valoran user, but close enough. It's figured out Valoran based on various things like the JSON API, the Author API, login error message. There's also a support user and a mark user as well, it's figured out. And as you can see down the bottom, we've got two password hits. Valoran's password there, which some of you might recognize. And there's also a password for the mark user. It hasn't figured out the password for support. I could leave it running for a while, but it's not going to figure that one out. It's a different password. So now we've got the password. We can go back to the login form. Notice how quick that was. We're now we're in site admin on this site. We've got whatever, we can do whatever we want now. Nice and easy. OK, so hacker's going to log out. So how do we fix this problem? And luckily, WordPress can help us there too. So the simplest and most important thing we can do is set a good password. Oh, come on. There we go. OK, set a good password. So if you go into your profile on your WordPress site, when you go to a new password, it hopefully gives you a password. So that is a randomly generated unique password. That's not going to be guessed by a brute force attack anytime soon. So there's really no reason not to use that password. Any password the WordPress generates for you like that, you should use it. It's going to keep your account safe from a brute force attack. But the question that everyone asks about after this is, how do I remember it? And you don't. You don't want to have to remember these passwords. So that's where a password manager, such as 1Password, comes in. And so you store all your passwords in the password manager, and then you remember the login details for the password manager only. And then all you have to do to access the site is you log into your password manager, grab the credentials, and then log into your site. 
nice and easy. And there's LastPass is the one, I, sorry, one password is the one I use. There's also LastPass, NPass, Dashlane, a whole bunch of others. Um, if you need a list, come and find me at the end. I can talk you through the different options. Um, so yeah, so user password manager. I cannot stress it enough. But the thing is, of course, not all of your users are going to use strong passwords, even though you tell them, use a strong password. And so that's where you need a login security plugin. So there are a bunch of different login security plugins in the repositories. I've just searched for login security here, and it's found some things. And so what a login security plugin will do is it does a couple of, adds a couple of different extra features to your site. So first up, it'll add something like brute force cloud-based protection. And so what that allows it to do is detect um, brute force attacks from multiple IP addresses and block those attacks. So the WordPress.com, sorry, the WordFence.com site, we got hit by a brute force attack from over a million different IP addresses. They're each doing a small number of requests over the millions of different IP addresses. And so we enabled, we're working on the feature at the time, but we enabled Google Recapture on there, which is a cloud-based login system, a login protection system. And what it allowed it to do was block those attacks entirely because the brute force attack wasn't able to authenticate through that, and it stopped the attack completely. And these login security systems will also include things like two-factor authentication. So you can have a unique token generated on your phone. And so when you log in, you have to type in your password and you enter the, the token from your phone. And the benefit of that is a brute force attack, if it's going to guess the password, isn't going to get the token from your phone. In order to steal the token, you need a targeted attack directly at that user to grab the token via phishing or some other method. And so it completely eliminates brute forcing as well. So, okay, not stress highly enough how important it is to have some form of login security plugin on your site, because it'll protect your users that aren't using good passwords. So, well, we could set that password and run the brute force attack again, it wouldn't find anything, but we don't have time for that, so we'll move on. So let's pretend that there's a solid password and we haven't got in. So what's the next thing we can do? And as I mentioned before, WP scan scans the vulnerabilities and version numbers. So we'll scroll up through the output it provided. Where is it? No, I've got to find it. <laughs> Scrolling is not working today. There we go. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. It says there are 52 vulnerabilities found. So this version of WordPress is version 4.7. It was released in 2016 in December. So it's quite old. And as I just said, it has 52 vulnerabilities. So that gives us potentially 52 different ways to compromise this site. So one of the one we're going to look at is this one here. This is actually one of my favorites. It came out just as I started working in WordPress security, so it's a bit sentimental for me. And it's just so easy to exploit. So what this vulnerability does, it allows you to modify page and post content without having to log in at all, which is really cool. So I'll show you how it works. So we'll go to the site. We'll find a page, a post, actually. Go to Hello World, because why not? What we need to do is figure out the ID of this post. Luckily, WordPress is going to help us here. We'll go to the source, comment. Oops, I can't type today. Yeah, I really can't type. That's it. OK, comment post. Right here, it's telling us the ID of this post is 1. We probably could have guessed that from Hello World, but so be it. So now we know the ID is 1. We're going to update the post. Go back to the command line. And let me just type this in. Oops. Now, the URL. So we need the URL for the JSON API, which I can never remember, so it's written down next to me. Post 1. Oops. 1. OK. Oops. Equals 1. Right. Now what we want to do, title, we'll change the title to greetings and the content to good, it's still morning, right? Cool. Yes, 20 more minutes. Great, okay. We'll run that, nice big block of output, go back to our site, refresh the page, we've updated the post. Nice and easy. <laughs> now those who recognize the command will notice there's no authentication there at all, no cookies, no nothing. That's how simple it was. And so we saw hundreds and hundreds of sites hit by this when the vulnerability was released. So what happened? WordPress, um, security discovered the vulnerability and quietly told WordPress. They fixed it and rolled out the update quietly. They didn't announce it, they just rolled out the update. And then a week later, they disclosed it. They told, they announced what the, up, the vulnerability was. And they allowed that week for automatic updates and updates to be applied in order to fix the vulnerability. They didn't want to leave it too long, so someone else couldn't discover it. And as soon as they did announce it, attackers started using it. And they were searching websites for WordPress 4.7 that weren't patched, and they're updating posts here and everywhere. And it, we, we were cleaning so many sites, and this is one of the reasons I remember it, was there were so many sites we were cleaning. Luckily, it was all in the database, so it was fairly easy to clean, but the fact is it was still very easy for them to exploit. And you get things like crypto miners and defacements and images and that sort of thing in there. So it was quite bad. So the question we have is, why isn't this site updating? Because why hasn't this site applied the automatic update and fixed the problem? So we'll go check site health. 
And those who know WordPress version numbers are going to know I've done something really weird with this site. Um, but we'll scroll down and wait for it to load. There we go. Have a look in here. Critical issue. Automatic updates have been disabled. So the site owner of this site has disabled automatic updates for whatever reason. And there are some legitimate reasons to do it, but the problem is, if you disable automatic updates, you need to be really careful about applying your updates as quick as possible. So as soon as an update is there, you have to go review it. You have to test it and, and apply it. You can't just leave it sitting around for days or weeks. Because it was less than a week, it was about a week, when they released the update and then disclosed the vulnerability and then sites started getting hit, hit. So if you spent longer than a week reviewing this plugin, your site was going to be hit from it. So we'll get rid of the config. Um, what is it? Okay, so we'll go into the config file, and automatic updates are disabled via this line in here. So we'll comment that out, and we'll go back to here, and we'll refresh the page, wait for it to load again. It's still loading, and it should be gone. There we go. This site's now going to automatically update to the latest version and protect itself. We don't really have time to wait for the automatic update, so we'll just go and apply it manually. There we go. But normally, if the automatic updates were working, then this would have happened sometime during that week. It's a couple of days, depending on your site. A couple of hours, if you're lucky. Um, but because of the disclosure period they maintain for the vulnerability disclosure, the sites were pretty safe that had automatic updates available. So that's just running through its update. Hopefully, it won't take much longer. And there we go. Doing weird things. OK, it's updated now. So we'll go back into our command line. And we'll run this again. How are we? Oh. Run it again, and we've got a new error. Got an error here, actually, I should say. So the fix for this vulnerability comes from how it's being exploited, which is the ID value here. So what's going on in the code, in the old code, the vulnerable code, is when the, response, when the request comes in, it says, OK, so I've been asked to modify this post with an ID of 1WCBNE. And the code goes away and says, OK, find me the post that has the ID of 1WCBNE. It checks the database. The post doesn't exist. So it doesn't care anymore. It just says, OK, that's fine. Keep going. There's no post. We don't have to do any authentication, which is kind of silly. Because the next bit of code says, OK, so we asked to modify the post that has an ID of, wait, this should be a number. Let's turn it into a number. So it turns it into 1. Then it checks the database and says, is there a post ID 1? Yes. Great. We've got content. Great. Update it. Done. And so that's how it's bypassing authentication, is because the ID is being turned into a number after it's authenticating. So the fix here is they're enforcing the ID value to be an integer a number. And so when the request comes in with the ID of w 1 WCBNE, it's rejected initially because the ID is not an integer. So the ID is not a number. So that's the simple fix they applied, which patched up the problem. And as I said before, if you had automatic updates running, your site would have been protected, and you'll be fine from that one. So that is a core vulnerability. You might have noticed there were also some other updates to be applied. So we're going to look at one of them now. So Wait for it to load. So here we go. Okay, so we're going to look at this one in the middle. This IP blocker line. So this is a simple little extension that allows you to block IP addresses from accessing your site. And the idea is, if you know an attacker is using this IP address and is going to attack your site, you can block them to prevent them from getting to your site. So we'll go and ignore its instructions and we'll block ourselves. Hopefully this won't backfire epically because that could be funny and bad. Okay, so we're going to block ourselves. We'll go back to our hacker browser, refresh the page. We're now banned by the administrator. So we're the attacker, we see this page, and this just gives us more reason to want to try and attack this site, because why not? It's also very easy to get new IP addresses. You can get VPNs, you can use Tor, a bunch of other um, ways to get different IP addresses. So ultimately, this isn't going to do much. So we're the attacker, we want to figure out how can we exploit this site. Well, let's do some recon, figure out what we're dealing with. So we'll view the source of the block page, and it's telling us we're running the WordPress IP address blocker pro plugin, the light version of the plugin, and the version is 10.3. And as we've seen before, version numbers are fantastic, because we go over and check the vulnerability database, and we have a vulnerability for the IP address blocker version 10.3. So this is a vulnerability known as a CSRF leading to arbitrary file upload. So CSRF is cross-site request forgery. And how that works is if you're logging into your site over here, and I, as a malicious person, can get you to visit my site here, my site can make fake requests to your site. And in many cases, all you'd be doing is updating options and defacements and just causing some minor nuisances. But in some cases, you can do a lot worse. And in this case, what you can do with the CSRF vulnerability is get the malicious site to upload a file onto the site you're logged into. And because it's an arbitrary file, we can get a remote shell and get full access to the site. So let's see it in action. So let's see, first of all, we've got to unblock ourselves. Where we go? OK, so we'll pretend that we've got a new IP address. Obviously, it's easy to just unblock in here. Go back in. 
So what we need to do as the attacker is get the site administrator to visit our site. And the question is, how do we do that? Well, it's easy, it's a blog, it's got a comment section. So let's exploit that. So, hi, I love your site. I wrote a review. Whoops, where is it? Obviously, we'd use something a little bit less obvious, but you get the point. Oops, OK. That's in there now. We're the site owner. We're going through our site. We see, oh, look, someone left us a comment. Oh, great, they wrote a review. Let's have a look at it. Oh, nothing to see here. Oh, well, let's go away. Nothing to see here, right? Yeah, well, now the, the, um, the hacker knows you visited their page. They can go to the site, and they can go content, uploads. What is it, 2008, shell, PHP, hack, remote shell. We can now run whatever PHP code we want on that site. It gives us full access to do whatever we want. Currently, it's listing all the files in the directory. We can, I don't know, we can say hello. We can read the config file, run a crypto miner, DOS our competitor's site. So we can do all sorts of fun things. Game over, basically. So what's the, pro what's the fix here? What can we do to prevent this from happening? And as a, as a user, as a site owner, what you really should do anytime you get a suspicious link like this is open up in incognito mode, because, whoops, ugh, that was really not what you should do. Okay, right click on it and you go to open incognito window or private window or whatever it is that your browser calls it. Um, and what that does is it opens up the malicious site in a completely separate environment which isn't logged into your site. So even if this is a vulnerability such as this one we just exploited, it's not going to have access to it and that will protect you from that. And you should do this any time you're visiting strange links to comments on your blog or even comments on forums or emails, anything like that. If, if you're not sure where it comes from, if you're not sure of the site, then it's best to open it in, in an incognito window because it protects you from any sort of attack like this. And the other thing, of course, is, as we saw before, there's an update available for this vulnerability. And the update was made available pretty quickly. And the fact that you have to go and physically open, say, a link in a comment or visit a specific page to be attacked by it means that you're more likely to see the update before you get hit by the vulnerability. And if you see an update for a plugin, go have a look at it. Open it up, click on the details, and check the change log. Because we can see here that 10.4 has security enhancements. So this version, this update, we know has security fixes. We should apply that as soon as possible. We shouldn't delay on that one. And so we'll go and update that one. And the question from a developer point of view, how do we fix this? And for concept, um, CSRF attacks, the fix is to use what's called a nonce or a CSRF token. And WordPress makes that incredibly simple. So if we go and view, this is the, the code they changed. This is the change they did to fix the vulnerability. And we look for nonce. So you can add a nonce, theme, a nonce field into your form here, this line here in the middle. And what that does is it adds a nonce onto the form. And so when the form is loaded in the browser, it generates a random token and it's sent to the user. And then when the, f the form is submitted, it has to send that token back. The server will reject any request to do anything if it doesn't have that token. And that's set down here. So it's running the WP verify nonce function, which is where it checks that that's in the response. And the, way, the reason this works is because browser security policies mean that the malicious site cannot read any data from your site. So it can't get the nonce. There's no way for it to get the nonce. All it can do is send requests, but it can't re read the response. And so if you've got a nonce running on the form, it blocks them entirely, and there's no way that it can exploit the vulnerability. So it's a nice, simple fix, and as I said, WordPress makes it really easy. So that is this vulnerability, but what if there's a bigger vulnerability, something like a zero day on your site? So for those who haven't heard the term, a zero day means the developer has had zero days to fix the vulnerability. So it's out there being used in the wild, and the, the developer doesn't know about it or hasn't fixed it yet. And there's one what we discovered, I think it was us, I can't remember exactly who discovered this one, in an extension for WooCommerce. Um, so it's this one here. So the abandoned cart light for WooCommerce has a stored cross-site scripting vulnerability. And so what that means is you can inject JavaScript onto a page and get it saved in the database. Then when the administrator views the page, it executes the JavaScript, which gives you full control over their browser. You can do whatever you want. I'm noticing a pattern here. So go to the shop. We'll add something to the cart. And we'll go to the checkout. OK. So the way it works, it was, it was on the form when it's saving in details. So put a first name, put some JavaScript in here, where it, you've been pwned, here are your cookies. Oops, what is that now? Yeah. Cookie. Hopefully I've got that right. That box is tiny, so it's really hard to see what I've typed. And then you've got to put an email address in for it to save properly. Oops, no, we don't want to reveal who we are. Use it there instead. Okay, 
So that should have sent it to the site. So we're a site owner. We're viewing our... Where's my mouse not working? We're viewing our abandoned carts. There we go. We've been hacked. Nice and easy. And every time that page gets loaded, it's going to run the JavaScript. And normally, it wouldn't announce its presence like that. It would be subtle in the background. And so you wouldn't even know what's going on. And when they exploited this in the wild, we'll go down in here, what they were running, I can find it, here we go. What they were running when they exploited this in the wild was that code, which was creating a new administrator account on the sites that were hit by it. So once they create an administrator account on the site, they can log in and do whatever they wanted, you know, change the payment details, steal customer information, you know, send fake products, that sort of thing. Um, so this was quite bad. Um, and because it was a zero day, it was exploited before anyone knew about it, so there were no updates available to patch this vulnerability at the time, and all you had to do was access the abandoned carts page for it to be executed, which made it really, really easy for them to take over your site, and there wasn't much you had to do. You weren't clicking on a new link or anything like that. You were just doing something you would normally do as part of maybe your, your daily process. Okay, and I'm running out of time. Okay, um, okay, so what you can do to fix this vulnerability, to fix zero-day vulnerabilities, is this where a firewall comes in. And so, luckily, I know someone that makes a firewall, so we'll go and enable WordFence. Uh, WordFence security, enable given. Come on, WordPress, enable yourself. Give it a sec. Okay, come on, here we go. Being silly. Okay, so we'll go back to our check it, checkout form. I'll open the inspector. And if we just change this to trigger it to update again, we should see a nice big red warning over here. WordFence has blocked it. So WordFence had, it has a default rule for catching um, cross-site scripting attacks, and it blocked this by default. So if you had WordFence or another firewall that has similar rules running, you would have been protected from this from the start, and your site would have been safe, regardless of the update being applied on the site or not, which is really, really useful. Okay, so something else that an attacker will do when they're trying to attack a site is they'll look for different things, like backups of configuration files or you know, new installations that haven't been applied yet. So this site, for example, we have, oops, get rid of that, has a new, new install that hasn't been run. It's still sitting there waiting for, a, for someone to run it. So we're an attacker, we might as well just, what is it, set up attack? Yep, might as well just attack it ourselves. So we'll run the script, it takes about five seconds, maybe. There we go. Refresh the page, looks like the site's normal, right? We're still on the installer, but, oops. Hello, dot. Yeah, I can't type today. And I really can't type. There we go, we now have our remote shell in this new installation. And the site owner's gonna come back, they're gonna run their install, they're not gonna see any different, they're not know their site, their installer is backdoored, and this gives us full access to the site. And we can also, because we're running in subdirectory, go back to the full site that this is running subdirectory of, so we can infect that one as well. Again, game over. So the thing about this one is an attacker isn't going to find that instantly. They're going to have to be searching your site to find it. So you can, you can copy up the setup script and you can run it. And as long as you do it within you know, a couple of minutes, you're, you're safe. There's very, very low chance they're going to find it that quickly. But you don't want to leave it, there, leave it sitting there for hours or days or weeks or months or years. And we've cleaned sites where they've had a thing like this sitting there for years. And it's been compromised so many times because an attacker comes along and installs it, configures it, removes all evidence, and the site owner has forgotten it's even there. Um, so you really need to keep track of any new installations that you put on the site. Okay, so last thing to talk about is um, plugins. Okay, so the other thing, there's a belief that some people have is that if a plugin is disabled, you can't do anything. It's safe, the code's not going to be run, and that is a very big problem because there are some plugins that respond to requests that don't go through WordPress. So for example, this one here, WP Auto Suggest, has an unauthenticated SQL injection vulnerability what that means is we can modify the database queries that are applied to the database. And if you can do that, then you can update the login details, you can bypass passwords, you can extract information, delete information, change stuff. It gives you full access to the database. And the reason why this works when the plugin is disabled is because the URL, it, it goes directly to the plugin. It doesn't go through WordPress. So we'll grab this, and we'll see what we can do with it. Uh, update the URL, otherwise it's not going to work. Okay, now what we want to do is figure out all the databases on this site. Oh, wait up. You'll notice our firewall word fence has blocked it again, so this is another reason why you want a firewall running on your site. 
is because it can block attacks like this. So this is again something that a, a generic rule in WordFence is blocked, and other firewalls are similar will block this sort of attack because they can detect it happening. So we'll run this again, and now we've got the, the database. So it's giving an information schema. We know now the site's database is HackDB. Um, tables, we want to figure out the table prefix because sometimes that gets changed. I'll look at it as HackDB underscore thing. Um, users, we want user pass, user email, user login. Uh, what's the thing? And I put that on there. OK, that's now going to download the users from the database using this, this vulnerability in this disabled plugin. This gives us encrypted passwords as well as a password that's badly practicing. So while well, that's running, are there any questions? Uh, there's a mic over here. There we go. There's our email addresses, our hashed passwords, and our login details. Um, the bottom hash is an MD5, which is trivial to, to, to find in a lookup table, so we could log in as that user as well. He was also an administrator from our old account. Um, yeah, I'll throw it over to questions. Good morning, thank you. Uh, I've got a question about, after viewing all of that wonderful things, LastPass or those password protectors, Yep. are they safe? Yes. Um, <laughs> so looking at and that the going. big ones like one password, last pass, and pass dash lane, all those things, they spent a lot of time and money making their product safe. Even one password, I know they have a $1 million bounty. If you can compromise one password and extract passwords out of it, they will give you a $1 million. That's how sure they are their security is safe, is because you know, they're putting their money on the mouth where the mouth is. So, yeah, you can trust those products because of that. So, yeah. What do you think of Easy Update Manager to uh, keep all, uh, keep everything up to date? Well, for core updates, definitely let the core automatic updates happen. Um, and as long as, and the health check in WordPress five point whatever it is will tell you if automatic updates are working properly. And so if you um, you can check that to make sure the automatic updates are there for core. And for plugins and themes, a tool like WordFence or them probably others will actually alert you when there are updates available. And so as long as you've got alerting working for the for you know, the scanner it'll tell you to go in and apply the update. And as long as you go in and do it within a day or two, you should be fine. And as, you know, having a firewall, the reason why you want to run a firewall on your site is so that it can protect you from attacks before you do the updates as well, such as the ones we saw there. The firewall was blocking them. So if you keep a firewall and then keep, um, apply updates when you're notified about them, then you should be fine. Where can I get all those fun little tools of yours? Um, that link up there, the SSC.IDAU, yep. has all the information I was talking about, including one of the things I, I skipped. Um, and I've got links at the bottom to WP Scan and SQL Map and such. And also, if you've got any questions, email me, stephen at wordfence.com. Um, and I'm running lock picking out of the hallway track shortly. So ask me any questions over that, um, and I can teach you lockpicks. And I've got a bag full of WordFence swag that's really, really heavy, so please take some. Because I don't want to have to carry it for the rest of the day. It's 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 ridiculously heavy. Thanks very um, much. Yeah. Stephen, thanks for that. Um, yep. The WoodFence plugin is available in a free and a paid for solution. Yep. We see on some sites where we've got it installed in the free version, where it's clear that the site's being attacked, and the attacker then just changes IP addresses. So it goes ahead and blocks the IP that it comes from, but then yep. uh, within seconds, it just r randomly generates IPs and comes from. Yep. Are we doing something wrong? Is there a way to block that out with the free version? Um, in the WordFence premium version, we have the, oh, on, the, the real time IP block, or whatever it's called. Um, and the idea of that is it uses the entire premium WordFence network to identify malicious IP addresses and block them proactively. Yep. And so, to, to, in order to block attacks where the IP addresses are changing, you need some form of infrastructure around it, some cloud-based solution. Yeah. And so that's why it's part of the paid version of WordFence, yeah. is that it can track it from there. I mean, it works pretty well. We haven't had it breach, but I look at it and think, is there a better way? So yeah, okay. Yeah, the different. problem is it's so easy to change IP addresses that you know, all you can do is try and block them when they come up and detect the attacks. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Um, 
Um, as far as I know, yeah. Um, yep. Go for it. Uh, um, does WordFence play well with S2 member and other membership plugins? Um, as far as I know, it does, yeah. Um, in the firewall rules, you can whitelist um, paths. So if it does block things that should be blocking, you can add whitelisting in there. And so you can allow through the specific calls that are being blocked if it's causing problems. Um, and if you're a premium subscriber, we've got the support you can reach out to to find help, and that's something we can help with. Things we've, um, you know, we can make we make we make changes to WordFence if we need to if it conflicts other things. Like we recently got um, made changes to get it working in WP Engine, which is fantastic. We've been wanting to do that for ages, so we're finally working on WP Engine. Yay! Um, so yeah, if there are specific problems with plugins, we can we can look at it and try and work around it. Yeah. Do we have any more questions for Stephen? I have a question for you, Stephen. Yep. Uh, so let's say that I have a bunch of client sites and I want to see how hard they are to hack. What would your advice be for developers who want to put their sites to the test? Um, how, do, how do you start thinking like a hacker? Like, What would be the first thing that you would suggest for them to try? Oh, um, if you're a developer and you want to start thinking like a hacker, I'd recommend looking for CTFs, so capture the flags. So what they are are hacking competitions. We've got sites. Um, specifically set up vulnerable sites that you've got to try and break into. And so it teaches you to look for the different ways you can break into it, like trivial things like the USQL injection. You'll often have a login form that you can modify the query through or um, you know, config files that are in plain text, that sort of thing. And so that's a fantastic way to start if you're a developer wanting to get into security, is looking for those sorts of things. Because it makes it a bit of a challenge and you get the, you know, the momentum building up as you start solving the challenges. Fantastic. Who is it? Who's going to try and capture the flag? I think I'm going to give it a whirl. <laughs> we used to run one at the US web camps, but we've stopped doing that now, unfortunately. Uh, do we have any other questions for Stephen? We've got a little bit of time before our next presentation. So any last questions up the back? Anyone? No? All right, I think we're done. Did you want to wrap up then, Stephen? Or? Um, if there's a little bit of time, I can show you my, the thing I dropped off my list. Yeah, go okay, for it. Cool. So. Um, the one thing, other thing I was going to talk about is um, null themes. So I don't know if anyone here has heard or used about news null themes and plugins before, but I, in short answer, don't. Um, so the one thing I faked for this talk is let's imagine that 2019 is actually a, a paid premium theme. And so I wanted it on my site, I didn't want to pay for it, and so I found it on a null theme site. So I've downloaded it, I've installed it, I ignored the thousands of ads on the null theme site. And I've installed it on my site. I'm pretty happy with that. But there's a problem. If we go down the bottom here, select everything. So that bottom line, if I go into source, what they've done when they were removing a licensing from this plugin is they've added in a bunch of different SEO spam links. And so what they're doing is they're using my site's reputation to promote their own services. So for example, nullplugins.com is promoting themselves. It will cyber hack, hack a toolkit. Apparently, WordCamp Brisbane gets advertising from null themes. Who would have known that? And some guy called Stephen Rees Carter also does it. Well, these dodgy people. OK, so that's, that's a problem. And they do that all the time. But there is a bigger problem with using null themes and plugins. Because they're modifying the code. You don't know what they've also added. So in this case, yeah, where's the URL? Go over here. They've added a backdoor. So now this attack, the person that writes these null themes can log into your site, do whatever they want, you know, add crypto mining, DOS competitors, that sort of stuff, right? Um, the other important thing to note is there are sites like this, a source code search engine, which means you can find websites based on the source code they've got. And if we go back to here, where was it? You see this thing like here? I've got this theme 2019. Now, if they add in some unique HTML in there, they can then use the, the source code engine to find your site. Once they've found your site, they can use the backdoor they've installed, and they've got full access to do whatever they want on your site. And we, um, we're investigating at the moment a specific null themes plugin site that we've downloaded all of the, we've crawled through their site, downloaded all of the ones they provide, and they're all infected with malware. Every single um, download on that site has malware in it. So as soon as you download that null theme or plugin, put it on your site, your site's infected with malware. And so I, I don't know how many times I can say, just don't, don't do it. Pay for, the, pay for the license or get something else. Get something that's free that's in the repository. You don't want to touch null themes and plugins. Um, yeah, and so the fix for that one, obviously, is you go and delete the theme or plugin, and you install the, the proper version or something else. Um, then you want to run a malware scan, because it might have infected across the other different sites. 
Um, yeah, I think that kind of covers it all up. Um, it's the only thing I was going to show, there is still time, is that um, hash at the bottom. So remember how I said this is an old hash? So there's old users. So if we grab that, and then we go over here, we've got a lookup tool, reverse that, and that's the, uh, that's the password for that username. So now we can log in as that user to the site. So even though all of the other accounts on that site have got the modern hashes, that's an old account that's been sitting there for years, full administrator, we can now log into the site. So the SQL injection vulnerability there that allowed us to download this page allows us to get in as well as the site owner. So again, full access to do whatever we want. Can you just tell that from the length of the Yes. So can we just get that one through the microphone just so that we can pick it up? I was just saying, can you tell that it's an MD5 from the length of the hash? Yes. Is that the... Yeah, yeah the um, MD5s have a specific length. I think it's 32 characters from memory. Shell ones um, have 40 characters, and then as the um, hashing algorithm gets stronger, they get a bit longer. Um, SHA-256 is quite long, and 512 gets even longer. But you can also tell it by looking at it. These top two are very different. So the, the dollar sign, P dollar sign, that's telling WordPress the hashing format. So it says that's a specific hash format. I can't remember what they're using. It might possibly be crypt or something. Um, and WordPress knows when it sees that, it can, it can apply that hash and work out how to compare the password. And if it doesn't see that, then it knows that that's going to be an MD5, because that's the old legacy password I used to use, and it supports both. Yeah, can we just grab a microphone down the front here? Yeah, yep, just this gentleman in the middle. So as far as fixing old password hashes, is yep. that just a matter of updating your WordPress, maybe changing the salt in the, in the WPConf and just making a new password, or just making a new password um, once yeah. the... Don't need, upgraded? Um, you don't need to change. If you want to upgrade passwords from the MD5, you don't need to touch the salts. Um, you just go and change the password on the user. I think even if they log in, it might reset the password at that point. I think that's what WordPress does from memory. So as long as that user can log in. Um, if they're an old user and they haven't logged in for years, then reset the password on them or just delete the account. If it hasn't been used that long, delete it. I mean, there's probably no reason it's there. Um, yeah, but a login or password change will reset the password. Yeah. Just one last question, right up the back. Yep, gentleman up the back. Hang on, uh, if we just wait for the microphone to come up, just because otherwise it doesn't get picked up on the recording. If they auth off LDAP, does it drop a hash in the local WordPress table as well? I've got no idea, to be honest, I haven't used LDAP with WordPress. Yeah. You'd have to have a look in the database to see what it puts in there, yeah. Cool, thanks. But some um, single sign-on systems, if they don't grab a password on the way through, they're not going to generate store some password in the database, they'll use some other Yeah, you wouldn't think, token, yeah. yeah. Depends what it does. I'll just throw it back to this, um, in case you want that again, um, yeah. And as I said, if you've got any more questions about stuff or links to anything, just send me an email. Fantastic. And uh, how can we find you on social media, Stephen? Um, I was on my front page. Are you on Twitter? Yes. Everyone's on Twitter, right? There we go. I should have put on that page too. I'm What's there. the hashtag? WCBNE. Yeah. Who's yeah. already posted today with hashtag WCBNE? Right. I'd night. like to see those hands doubled by lunchtime, please. <laughs> yes, I'm Valoran on Twitter. Yeah. Cool. Fantastic. Great right. round of applause. Thank you.